the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We all love orangutans. <laughs> They're so strong. Yeah. They Except are strong. for possums. Uh, we all seen what happened at Perth Zoo. Our, this orangutan is now famous. Isn't I'm going to say worldwide I know. famous. Yeah, it is worldwide now, Nate, yeah. at the moment. So yeah. a possum decided to go into the orangutan's enclosure and uh, got it into curled his up bed. up in its nest, Got yeah. into his bed and the orangutan was not happy. Um, uh, you know, like sort of scared the possum as possum, scurried up a it thing. poked it with a stick. Got a stick and was poking it. <laughs> so funny. The and then he finally got hold of the possum who broke into his house and got into his bed and he threw it. He um, ate it. Him right out of the enclosure. Everybody at the Perth Zoo reacting to what they were saying. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> he, he's fine. <laughs> the Goldilocks of no, possums. He's so out of my bed. Sorry, sorry, away. sorry. The Perth Zoo said he's fine. Are you Are you going to go on record as saying the Perth Zoo are lies, Nathan? Well, I'm just wanting to see a uh, a photo of the fine possum. <laughs> well, it ran away. Relaxing <laughs> on a banana lounge <laughs> with a cocktail. <laughs> because um, they did report also that that orangutan threw that possum into another enclosure that had two more orangutans. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to hey leave it, so I don't know if that's Hatch. fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very, very great. Uh, and torn apart. They're very hardy little fellas, obviously. <laughs> they are. Amazing, but I tell it? you what, though, I mean, you know, animal laws are a little bit looser than human laws, mm. so, I mean, like, the orangutan can't be upset that a possum got into his bed. I think it's a really rude reason to be thrown out. Oh, no, I think no, if you no find way, somebody, somebody or something in your bed... Walk into your house. Someone's in your We're room. humans. This is an animal. Yes, Even still. worse. This is an animal. And it doesn't, have, it doesn't have... Okay, if, you, it's, if you're leaving your door open, by the way, which is door is always open, and someone comes into your house and flogs stuff, that's bad on them. But also, you're an idiot. No, but the orangutan hung up a sign that said no possums. <laughs> no. So that is totally <laughs> his defence in, in a court of law. <laughs> in a court of that. jungle law. Uh, it must be really um, uh, unfair when you are kicked out or thrown out mm. of somewhere for a ridiculous reason. There was mm. an article at a while back that had um, a bunch of people that were uh, told to leave different establishments. And let me, t- I'll read out some of the reasons why. Let Please. me know if they're, mm. if, if they're over the top. Mm-hmm. Please. Mm-hmm. All right. The landlord of a pub spilt a jug of gravy on me. He was taken to a table of diners. He threw me out because I said, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Out you go. No, no, that's reasonable. Okay. Um, my wife got asked to leave a bar because she was laughing too much. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, how much was she laughing, though? Well, I know. Because yeah, you're right. If yeah, you're there's cackling a, up a yeah, storm, it's like, yeah, come on, mate. And it could have been like a nice, quiet wine yeah, bar. Yeah, exactly. Like a 60s, 40s bar. Where All right, that one's justified. 60-year-old men are trying to pick up 40-year-old women. Yeah. Um, walked into a local pub in the 70s yeah. with a few mates. The landlord looked at one of the lads and said, he's not getting served, get out, because he had shoulder-length hair. <laughs> shoulder length hair. Isn't in the so... 70s. Is there anybody who didn't have shoulder length hair in the and 70s? And this guy says, yeah, um, many years ago, I asked the landlord to turn up the volume on the jukebox. Instead of turning it up, um, he turned it off. Uh, I asked my money back. So he said, get out. <laughs> so these are, mm. they all seem to be ridiculous. I mean, they shout out to my mate Justine, who was thrown out of the Como Hotel. What's she um, um, Because she uh, was having a little nap on a bench in the corner. Oh. She's very tired. We were there for a mate's farewell. And she was like, oh, I'm just going to have a little lie down. Down, yeah. And the uh, bounce came up and threw her out. She wasn't completely sourced? No, she, she wasn't. Tired? She was just really tired. Yeah. Yeah. We want to talk about being thrown out of somewhere, and it wasn't fair because it's a ridiculous reason why mm. you're thrown mm. out. Uh, like the possum. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was really, that was a full on throw out. <laughs> this is the Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Stage and screen Thank you. at the same time. And radio. Yeah. Amazing. Oliver, you're Best flashing. again, Pete. Was it big pardon? Yeah, thespian again. Yeah, he is. He's the Alan DeGeneres of Perth. Shredding, <laughs> shredding the board. <laughs> so, Pete, we did. I've mentioned just before off air. We had you in here for Priscilla. Yes. Which was the last thing you? Was that the last uh, production the, you did? The last show I had. That was the last job I had two years ago. <laughs> but no. now you seem to have all the jobs. And it's really unusual because remember during COVID, there was all these stories about you yeah. because the industry, the, the arse fell out of the industry it and did. then you did what? Drove a truck. He drove a yeah. truck. Well, I, so did, you, I learned to drive you a truck. Tra- yes. You trained to get your, your I, Yeah, because you thought this is what I <laughs> might need to do. Yes, I have. Well, I've done that. Yes. And, I got, and I didn't need to drive because yeah. in the end, people said, that's a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> because they put it into a news story. So that's very sad. Let's give them a call. And they gave me... <laughs> 
just my line Eddie Adam work practice has to say that they're <laughs> yeah. getting a job. Like, I mean, I'm a bit of a, oh bit no, of a Rebecca slap. Gibney's turned to Uber. <laughs> a bit of a slap in the face to truck drivers. Yeah. <laughs> because I remember oh, years ago, yeah. in the seventies, a guy called Gerard something, Kennedy, and he was in a show called Division 4, which was one of those big right. cop shows. Right, yeah, it was shows. a cop show, yeah. Yeah, and he was ended up being, you know, he had one, weird, one of those glass eye people, had a weird glass eye. <laughs> He's one of those glass eye people. <laughs> you know, weird yeah, glass yeah. eyes that shoot but, off different directions. <laughs> and uh, he was driving a cab, and there's a big news, oh my God, famous actor drives cabs. Yes. So I thought, that's not a bad angle. So, yeah. 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 To the old truck driving. Anything truck. for publicity. Anything for good publicity is any publicity. So, yeah. we're going to speak more about it when uh, you bring Frankie in. Yes. But um, let's just quickly touch or on the. She brings me. Yeah, she yes. brings in um, The Amazing Race. Yes, yes. Can't wait. I didn't even know you guys were on it until I saw the promo, and I was like, oh my I God, it's Pete and Frankie. It looks I so know. great. It was really good fun. So, yeah, this is celebrity fun. edition, obviously. Yeah, yeah we're... Dingo celebrities at this stage picked out the bottom of the barrel, they scraped it, and we fell out, which is great. <laughs> And, uh, no, you're a big celebrity. Do yeah, not you make are. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you can't say bottom of the barrel and they scraped you out because we're not even in the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. Uh, we, uh, I had a ball. We didn't know where we were going to go. It was all pretty... They tried to, you know, did it all secretly, a little bit like the jungle, and that they yes. kept you apart. You didn't know who was yeah, going to be yeah, on. Yeah. Yep. And, oh, is that um, right? Until you started, you didn't yeah, know who you were up yeah, against. Yeah, yeah. In so, case you tried to take the Twiggly sisters out behind That's right. The scenes. I would yeah. You would have tried to kill the twiggly sisters. <laughs> wow. Gee, really no, not that. kill them. Just take oh. them off the chessboard. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right. But how long was that? When you, how long of filming and how long ago are we that allowed was, to know uh, that part? Yeah, we did that back in June. So, yeah, right. So we, well, we went to Sydney and did some training. <laughs> training? What, sort of, what training. did they train you for? Rip the, thing over, rip the envelope open. Uh, <laughs> pull out. Read the clue. Stop. Camera repositions. <laughs> yeah, really? Act like you're ripping it open. I thought, I, thought, yeah, really. I, right, I thought you were doing like personal training, like, you know, you're going to go jump off <laughs> yes, a waterfall no. and then immediately after we'll play Connect Four. Yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> eat an ostrich egg. Yeah, yeah that's it. No. But you, you have to run. learn how to rip the envelope and stuff. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, yeah, just the mechanics where the camera's got to go to do yeah. things. And then, and also <gasps> we had little clues to find around the foyer of the hotel. <laughs> just <laughs> as a <laughs> practice <laughs> run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Hilarious. And we'll talk about it later, but it was really good fun. When we didn't go, well, no, I'll about yeah, okay. well, I mean, okay, cool. l- let's talk about why you're here. Um, yes. uh, Chicago. And Chicago. all that jazz. Chicago. I mean, that, uh, all that used to be was where Oprah lived. Yeah, yeah. that's right. But, um, the Windy City. Who <laughs> are we in Chicago? Oh, that's Roxy good Hart? Point. No, I'm not. I think that's my wife. Okay. That's my wife. Yeah, oh. yeah. So I sing a song called Cellophane Man, which is because I'm kind of an invisible character. So I'm one of the really. Oh, I thought. Yeah, I thought you were the thing that jazz up a basket full of soaps. <laughs> no, no. Cellophane Man. All right. <laughs> Got it. Nice. Um, it's a. Uh, I sort of play a weak husband to a murderess, mm. and uh, it's great. It's all I, I sing a song, and I. I don't know. I've got a few scenes, but it's really good. I haven't done a musical since well since Priscilla. Oh, Priscilla. Yes. Before then, I did Rocky Horror Show in the nineties. I'm not a, not a musical guy. Yeah, I hear a little bit of the song. I, I don't know the song at all. How how does it go? How, how would no, but how would one how would one do how would one sing it? How would one sing it? How would you one sing it? But how would one sing it? You're asking me to sing. But how would one sing it? Sing would would go. Um, he would sing. Have you got it there? Yeah. Have you got the Harry, no, yeah. no, the go. Google's broken. Here we go. I'll just do it. Now. We can. Sing a, along with it. Oh, this sounds like you should be taking clothes yeah. off as you're doing it. Yeah. Is it? Is this a disrobing oh number? Yeah, it is. Is this talk singing though? Oh, no. no, it isn't no, that's, a talk that's singing. singing. That's singing. <laughs> no, there's whisper singing for people that can't sing this talk yeah. singing, but this is. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Da, 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 da. And there's a bit of. <laughs> A bit of dancing as well, really, isn't there? A bit there? of this one, a bit of yeah. that. Yeah. A bit of jazz hands. A bit of jazz yeah. hands and a bit of low kick. This is hey, Pete, what got you kick. into... How did you get into the musical theatre side when you went to Rocky to start with? To oh, get, okay, get on so this path? a guy... When I was doing... I was in the... I'd done the comedy company and yeah. things like that and I was doing a bit of comedy around town and one of the guys in that cabaret comedy scene in Melbourne was a guy called Nigel Trifford who was more of a designer mm. and he got to direct the the new Rocky Horror Show. Mm. Oh. So uh, it just had a big set and had, had a rocket that took off and stuff. I came to Perth in the late 80s. Yep. And I started doing that. And Gina Riley, Gina... Gina Reinhardt? No. <laughs> Riley. Yes. Gina Reinhardt was in it. She bought it, no. <laughs> Twiggy was in it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but we didn't have a big budget, which was weird. <laughs> and the, and the late was Hank, the, Lang Hancock was in it. Was that the <laughs> horror part of it? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I did that. And Gina Riley was in it with Janet and... Uh, 
so I was riff raff and out in the but, but why did you do it? Why? Why, yeah. did, why did they because ask you, you in the comedy? Oh, because I was just asked. It's a, okay. <laughs> yeah, so sure. you thought, I'll give it a go. I'll give it because, a crap. Uh, like, I'm not a singer. I'm no yeah, that was water, my question. Sure. So yeah. like, I can hold a tune. But if I, you're it, not a singer, musical theatre is an unusual career path. Yes, you know it what is. I mean? Yes, Because right is. now, you're more, would you be more nervous singing to us right now rather than a stage full of people? Yes. Yes. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You, it's got to be is it because of our judging boys. faces? Pick the pick your nose in front of me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> pick your nose. We'll start singing in front of me. <laughs> 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 start singing in front of me. Not singing in front of me. But how would one sing it? No, don't do that. Don't do that again. It's like a trick. More of Pete Rose. Say one. Hurry up. Unless he storms out, which is imminent as well. I'm going to storm out. Pete, we are talking about Chicago, which yes, is are. coming uh, in November here. You're doing it for a month, right? No, longer. I'm doing it for mm. months and months. Oh, oh you're travelling around. Though. It's here yeah, for a month? It's yeah, here for, but it starts in Perth. No musical mm. ever starts in That's Perth. That's true. Normally, they always go in Sydney, yes. Melbourne, mm. Adelaide. Every, they've gone everywhere. By the time it gets to Bethlehem, it's limping into town going, yeah. <sighs> yeah. 400th <laughs> yeah. one of these. Yeah, yeah. We, Perth doesn't get, even get the understudies. We get the stage hand. And <laughs> 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 they just wearing... played the lines last night. <laughs> you still got your headphones on. Yeah. Backing it up everywhere. Every night you get, you must get absolutely knackered. Where you go, I can't be asked. No, I, I don't say it out loud. <laughs> but no, when it's musicals are fun. They're fun. To, it's a bit like rugby league. I, I fun to play. Yes. not great to watch. For, okay. from, from yeah, my point okay. of view, yeah. I just, I'm not a mad musical goer. Yeah. But uh, when you're in them, that's great. I'm surrounded by really good singers. Like yeah. I can, I can hold a tune. No, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> Ask it another way. How would one hold a tune? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we, um, uh, yeah. So I, I just kind of. Um, it's exciting. You get a lot of drive from mm. working with professionals. Yeah. Eight <laughs> shows a week, are you doing? Yeah, I think yeah, so. That's yeah, yeah. And we get on. little breaks, though. So we go we start in Perth, as I said, and yep. it's really good musical. Like it's, it's like a super famous one. Oh, yeah. So yes. Lots of Tony Awards, and, you know, mm. it's one of the best ones ever. And if you're from the musical crowd, they go, oh, my, I'm in Chicago. Yeah, they yeah go, okay. really. And I go, oh, this is good. I've got yeah. lucky. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have you forged a close relationship with your understudy? I haven't found out who that is. Ooh, if I have one at all. Secret or, understudy. You need to know who's going to be pushing you down the stairs. I know. Yeah, do you got show girl. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, uh, an understudy will be planning to do I, poison you they right want their now. Moment to if shine. they push me down the stairs, yes. do I still get paid? Yeah. yeah. Push me down the stairs. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. If I could get pushed down the stairs yeah. and get paid to take be here and not be here, take me to the <laughs> tallest set <laughs> and just shove. <laughs> uh, we are gonna, uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be a really good musical. Anthony Waller, who's like a superstar, yeah. you know, musical com He's in it. Yeah. yeah. With and you. With Did me? he know you were yeah. going to be in it? No. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I said to him, hey, so we can come yeah, our so audience Ventura spaces. Ventura as yeah. well. There's so many buzzy chairs and wheelchairs <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> In frames. The, <laughs> in the theatre world, is it is the overacting? Does that get to you sometime? Because when I'm like watching, a pantomime, yeah, really yeah. yeah. Oh, that's you've got to be oh, big. And, and people in real life, the like people that. up the back need to see you. You know what I mean? It's you've a little be bit big. of that. Yeah, yeah. It's something. Uh, it's finding your level. I think that's mm. what you know. To I think that's why Hugh Jackman likes doing it. You kind of you can still act in it, and there's still but yeah. you burst into song occasionally. Yeah, <laughs> that's like being but you're a bit jazzy. Me. And how would one burst into song? <laughs> <laughs> Again, Mr. Stella. Oh, Millie, oh, Millie. Like no, do you take less? Do, do they? Are, do you have singing lessons? Is oh, that... they'll send you a little tape before yeah. and say this is your sing along track. So you sing okay. along in the car and you sing along out in the park. So you might see me do some jazz hands, walk yes. on the dog. Oh, look yeah, at him go. Yeah. Who's that guy? That and uh, you just get your head around it. And the more you sing that one song over and over and over again, um, it sort of goes in. Then it sounds like you can sing. Um, yes. And if you make a bit of a character thing, put a bit of character yeah. layer on top of it. Bit of suddenly, fun. yeah. What's your character you, layer? I'm uh, not sure. Of, yeah, I've worked it out. You've got till the 21st of November. My character's always got hiccups. <laughs> He's got Mr. Stella. Hey. <laughs> oh, he did it again. That'll do it. Interesting choice. That? Interesting choice. So you're going to have to be away for, like, Christmas and stuff because you're going to be in Brisbane after... Yeah, we go here up until Chrissy, then we stay here for Chrissy, go over early, late December, start, do, do Brizzy, come back in. Then I'm doing a film down in Albany. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, called what? Fredericktown. I'm looking forward to it. What happened? Yes. You know, What's Miles Pollard's, and I'm playing a serial killer. How are you? Yeah. Really? I'm going to take my problem. This is a false tip. Are you going to I'm gonna unscrew it. It's good. Oh it's wow! Unscrew it. it like a light bulb. Yeah, yeah like Can a light bulb. Can you unscrew it now? Or? No, not.
not in front of you. I think. Well, but how you, would okay, one right. do it? Okay. <laughs> then they, they put a little plug in it, and then yeah, they, yeah, I yeah. can walk around with no teeth in front. Going, Amazing. What are you staring at? Oh, You've got that in you, I reckon. So I reckon whenever... you'd be a convincing serial killer. I reckon I would be. Mm. You mm. Saw, I said I, I watched a show just recently where someone got accident. It was a TV show, like you know, and someone accidentally got their um, tooth knocked out, and the actor didn't have a tooth in it. Yeah. Do actors really take their teeth out? Well, sometimes just, it can be done, you know, they just put that black stuff on there, but yeah, not anymore yeah. with cameras. They're probably not going to pull their healthy teeth out. No. Well, but I've seen that enough but, to know to think that all these actors just couldn't have gotten the role that required them to have a false tooth and they just happened mm. to have one. Yeah, well, I happen to have one. So what, would gonna... you as an actor for a great role pull one of your teeth out? How much is it? Like, I know that's still attached naturally. Yes. You pay me ten million bucks. Yeah. Yep. Ten million. <laughs> I'll take out Rose. All of them. Yep. I'll take out Rose. <laughs> yeah. Take I'll out meet Rose. you there. Sure. Ten Rose. million dollars. Take yeah, out all your teeth. Yeah. Put some yeah, implants back in. Some, yeah. You just get some yeah. plugins, yeah. yeah. Ten million bucks. I'll just do whatever I want with my uh, one gummies, million dollars. With my gums. With your gums. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can make another ten million. Stop it. I can suggest some places. Sorry. Uh, have to work with your <laughs> <laughs> um, If you want to see Pete Rose Thorne oh, in Chicago, everybody, and you definitely do, <laughs> it's happening at Crown Theatre the 21st of November to the 17th of December. Tickets from ticketmaster.com.au. Go and selling check it fast. out, everyone. Um, mate, selling, selling fast. fast. And why yeah, wouldn't yeah. it? Go and it's going to be Pete. a cracker show. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's always Pete. a pleasure. <laughs> Pete so Rose Pete. So how long do we have to wait till we have to get you in before again? <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, when does yeah when does that go to air? A couple of weeks, I think. All right, we'll I see know, in a the couple day of weeks. Told. It's very shifty. We'll get Frankie to bring her dad in. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Who's her dad? Oh, oh summer has been. Showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Pete. It's the Nathan, Matt, and Sean podcast. I have never been to Graceland. I you have. have. Yes, Tell indeed. Tell us about it, Nat. Well, it's not as big as you think it's going to be. Okay, yeah. And it's quite amazing because you to, to go it, to do a tour, you have to, the, you line up basically across the road, literally across the road, where there's a kind of like few shops and cafes and things and a um, souvenir shop and the rest of it. And then you get on a bus that literally drives you across the road, through the gates and drops you off and then you go in. And there are so many people there who are there clearly as their dying wish to go to Graceland. There are people lugging oxygen tanks and all sorts of people <laughs> that need assistance yeah. upstairs and all sorts of things And because all they want to do in their life is see Graceland. Well, this is it. It's okay. a lot of people, it's a one-in-a-lifetime experience yeah. and that was the case for um, a couple of British tourists, uh, a guy named Tommy and yep. his wife, Nanny. <laughs> Tommy Nanny. Nanny. Nanny, nanny, as in the nanny. Mm. Isn't that strange? Anyway, um, uh, Tommy saw an opportunity. Uh, he was out the back of Elvis's mm. backyard and he saw the pool. And then he saw that the security guard was not really close to the pool. Mm. Oh. Mm. So then he thought, well, what is one to do? I'm what never going to get a chance do? like this again. So he jumped onto the diving board and did a massive bomby. Um, the security were not happy about mm. it. Mm. You're not allowed in there, my well, You're not allowed to do that. Are you serious? You serious? Are you serious? Well, we I sort of know from all with. the signs saying not to do it. And the it. fact yeah. that no one else is doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so he was escorted out, yeah. him and his wife, Nanny. Um, and then they posted it on Instagram and everyone was, like, calling them criminals and said, like, you're criminals. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, it's sacred. It is sacred. <laughs> That's why yeah, These are probably from Elvis fans. Elvis fans. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that would and be sacrilege to them. The pool is right next to where yep. his grave is. Yep. So... Anyway, so, Nanny you know, has taken um, onto ground. TikTok to defend her husband's actions. Yep. She started by talking about how um, Elvis would not have been upset because Elvis once caught someone swimming in his pool and Elvis just let him go. So she cited Buddy Holly. Elvis. That's, oh, so she had, um, a, you know, um, previous case. Previous case, well Elvis done. case. Precedent. To go, well, no, Elvis is cool with it, right? Um, but then she, um, she, you know, she did have an opinion on people that were having a go at her and her husband and, and here she is. Elvis caught someone jumping in his pool once and he never stopped him. That's what a pool is meant for us to jump into. We did get escorted because we don't want anyone else to get the idea to jump into it. It's not my fault you never had the chance and I've got the nerve of jumping in his pool. 
jealous. Oh, I thought you were jealous. You're just jealous. jealous. It's not he has my an fault. amazing accent, you're by the jealous. way. Pool, a pool was there to be jumped into. Yeah, that's right. If you see a pool, you have to yeah. jump in it. Everybody knows that. We want to know um, 13, 24, 10, and some of these may be a little bit um, uh, naughty because Bo- borderline. you really shouldn't have jumped in mm. Alice's pool. Might have been against the rules. But you know what? You're never going to get another chance, so you should just do it. That's what we're talking about. You're never going to get another chance. You've realised now is your time. Mm-hmm. What did you seize? What mm. opportunity did you yes, take hold of? come on. These are going to be fantastic. And maybe you've got another opportunity that you want to go and see, um, and we can get you there with $200 cash from What If. Stop it. Uniquely Aussie experiences are only a What If away. Book your next trip on the What If app. What If it's Aussie for travel. All right, me. own up. You realise you were never going to get another chance, so you just went and did it. Stories all around the world. Mm. People jumping in that fountain. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. The Trevi fountain. Trevi fountain. fountain. Yeah. People are like, get out. It's like, well, yeah. wait there. Well, yeah. I'm one opportunity. Get another chance. you got to take the opportunity. One time I was out at Nutter Wadding. My uh, Rove was shooting his show out yeah. there. Yeah. So I was out there and then the show finished and I took the opportunity with my cousin Luke to sneak out the back where the Lasseter's set You went was. to Neighbours. Yeah. I went to the Neighbours Lasseter, in Lasseter's. We yes. had a beer in there. You had a beer in Lasseter's. Hey, how good's that? Hilarious. Uh, let's go to Rebecca and Coogee. Hi, Rebecca. Hey guys, how you going? Good mate, we're right. talking about seizing the moment because you were there. What'd you do? Yeah, it was a little bit naughty. We were up at um, 80 Mile Beach, which is up between Port Hedland and Broome. Yep. And um, it's well renowned for its shells on the beach. And there's big signs there saying, please don't take the shells, you know, due to nature and all that sort of stuff. Due to nature. And, um, <laughs> due to nature. <laughs> came, came, came across the, uh, a big cone shell, which literally went from my fingertips to my elbow. Oh. Um, and it was bright orange, and I've never seen anything like it. And so, of course, that kind of has made its way home to go on my coffee table. Oh, God, you would have had to. Okay. You couldn't leave that. But, you know? but, so no, why, why don't they want you taking the shells? Is it so other animals can crawl in and live in them? Like, what is the deal? I, I, I think it's to do with the hermit crabs, to be honest. Are the okay. crazy yeah. crabs that can't crabs. carry one that big? But, yeah, how, how big is the crab that's yeah, going to yeah. come and crawl crab. into that one? That's insane. I would want to come across it, that's for sure. So um, does everyone comment on it? Yeah, they are. They love yeah. it, especially because mm. of their colour too. Like I've never seen. Yeah, the, the bright orange factor combined with the. Are size, you sure you didn't just pick up a witch's hat? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, you know, it's not, not far off it. Hey, that'd be worth a bit, wouldn't it? Oh, oh, oh sure. Like, you always have to put a monetary right. value I on yes, everything. Yes, I do, Sean. Natalie. Yes, I do. <laughs> Why well, is it? Is people would sell real shells. Yeah, yeah they, they do. Yeah, Sally does. Sally <laughs> sells these shells. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. yeah, that's right. There's a shell shop in Esperance, Nathan. Did I know? In village, the owls. Yeah, exactly. They made this shell out. Thanks, Beck. Denise is in High Wickham. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi, Hi Denise. Denise. Is this a story about your hubby, Hi. Denise? What did he do? Yes. Right. We were actually at Graceland. It, he's a massive, massive Elvis fan. Mm. And it was the year after 9-11. Mm. So um, we were doing a world tour, actually. And we were in Memphis. And we were at Graceland. And as you are well aware, the grave sites are out the back. Well, he decided he was going to pick up a pebble off of the um, Elvis's grave, which he did. Oh, a pebble. And he put it in his pocket. Yes. yes. <laughs> and he took it all the way back here to Australia. Yeah. And he had to have it made into a ring because he's also a collector of rings. Ah, oh, 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 he has a, a pebble. A rock on his ring <gasps> that is from yes, Elvis's now, grave. Yes. Now, what he did, we took it to a jeweller friend. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that friend's even listening. Um, and we paid over $1,000 to have this unique ring made. That It's Kevin's pride and joy. Mind you, he's got a handful of rings, so mm. everyone's going to know who he is. <laughs> yes. Wait there, when you, Denise, when, when, when you say that Kevin's got a handful of rings, how many does he have on each, like, does he have multiple on each finger or one on each finger? No, every finger. Every, every finger, finger has finger. a ring. You don't see a lot of men Except with that many thumb. rings on. Yeah. No, Except no. for the thumb, um, because yeah. that would be weird. And they're all, all gold, but he has spare rings now as spare well, rings. which he only pulls out to special occasions. Yes. Yeah. And the Elvis ring is one of those. It's a special occasion, so ring, for sure. Can you tell me about the peb? Also, they just like... Uh, just normal it's, petals uh, we put in our garden beds, so like a, to speak, like over a river, the... Like a river yeah. pebble kind of thing. Um, yeah, as Nat would know when she was visiting, they're just white granite yes. rocks. I couldn't see the point in it. Oh, right uh, so, so what you'd find in a fish tank, that sort of look? Uh, like, no, bit it's bigger. a bit bigger. It's more like just a, a, a white rock. I don't know. Yeah. It was, to me, it was a silly thing to do. <laughs> no, but it's Elvis's, it's Elvis's graves. That is, that's a talking that point. Denise, can I tell it you... 
I am speaking on behalf of everybody in Perth right now. Can you please send us a photo of this? Yes, this please. Ring? We need to see this ring. Is that a, mm. is that possible? Um, I don't know how to do it, but I will try. So okay. where would I send the photo oh, to? We'll send I you will out. send we'll you out a prepaid envelope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'll sort it out to you. I'll sort it out. And a Polaroid camera. Uh, and we'll pay for your film to get developed. <laughs> They're still doing that at the chemist? They oh, are. Okay, they cool. are. All right. 13, 24, 10. <laughs> we want to know if you did something because you saw the opportunity, you seized the moment, you thought, I'm never going to get the chance to do this yeah. ever again, so I'm just going to do it, even if it's slightly on the dodge. Yeah, which we're fine with. Mm. I mean, Elvis's grave has been stripped bare of all its rocks. Well, we're fine. But you know what? Um, his skull as your necklace is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Wes in Burn Beach. Hey, Wes. Hey, how you going? Hey, Wes. Wes. All right, so taking the opportunity because it's once in a lifetime when you're there, Wes, what'd you do? Well, it was, um, you know, it was a great big millennium change from 1999 to 2000. It's a big time. Yeah, yeah, it was like the Y2K, the world was going to end. Well, it's going to end, mate. Remember that? People thought planes were going to fall out of the sky. Clocks didn't know what to do. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, we'll, like, we'll, um, I guess, New Year's Eve party in... in, um, in the centre of Brisbane, Fortitude Valley, and and I was right near the Story Bridge, and basically as the clock, you know, strict, um, strike 12 o'clock, I ran across the Story Bridge in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> so, what a great celebration. What a, what a time to yeah. be alive, too. Uh, like, if you're going to do it, uh, that's the time to do it. I've New millennium. That bridge yeah. with my and clothes on. Yeah, that, 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 that's called the 1DK. Mm, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you get a few yeah, really long the, yeah. the, the photos are, you know, like... You know, quite a memento, but they were actually quite embarrassing because, you know, everything was on the upswing, if you get what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> right, we get what you mean. Thank you for making that super hey, visual. Where's, how long ago was that? Well, 99. Oh, 2000. 2000. So, so, yeah, so, so, were you, so were you in way better nick back then than you are now? Yeah, how long was that? I was 30. Mm. So, yeah. You know what? It's, it's it, I, I watched there's an episode on Shits Creek that Moira says to her daughter, or says to Frankie, uh, sorry, Stevie on the front desk, take a thousand nude photos of yourself now because when you're it, older, it you'll look back better. on kinder eyes with kinder <laughs> eyes. I'm really glad that Wes has that. Yeah, that's a beautiful <laughs> thing. Uh, thanks, Wes. Troy's in Morley. Hello. Hello. Hey, Troy. Troy. All right, Troy. When did you seize the moment? Because you thought, I've only got one chance of this. <laughs> uh, it was back in 93, my graduation year for high school, mm. um, and we'd made the inter-school swimming carnival, um, and the the government school sports minister was doing the presentation at the end of the thing, and me and my buddy had escaped from our little school cordon off area, yeah. jumped the fence, jumped, got down on the deck, climbed the tower, mm-hmm. and then as the minister was making the presentation we screamed at our school's name and jumped off yeah right <laughs> so off the 10 metre platform oh uh, no it was the top platform I, I think it's like it, it it was dangerously high yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it'd be the yeah, 10 metre yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it was yeah. higher yeah. than yeah. 10 yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 where were you challenge my stadium my buddy was with me he wanted to bail right last minute he's like I want to go off the second top one I'm like no way mate this yeah. is it's all or nothing it's it. all it's or it. nothing mm. Troy um, yeah. my cousin Maureen who um, uh, was living in Kalgoorlie she jumped off the highest diving board in the Kalgoorlie Olympic pool and she has she was a very large breasted woman <laughs> and she hit the uh, water Troy with such force that it split the skin from underneath both of her boobs of <laughs> her melons that's why you never go to the top one. <laughs> it's a lesson for everybody there, it isn't is. it? Thank you, Troy. Sean? Absolutely. Gonna... <laughs> we have $200 cash. Uniquely Aussie experiences are only a what if away. Book your next trip on the what if app. What if it's Aussie for travel? Denise was telling about her husband who stole the... Um, the pebble uh, the from pebbles Elvis's from, grave. Yeah, we're, we're going to check out the photos. Sooner enough, we'll get them. <laughs> and, uh, it's being developed at the chemist. <laughs> looking forward to it. That's coming your way, Denise. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.